I know it's been a while since I did anything to the Camaro, but today we're going to jump back head first into it. I've been trying to clean the booth out so I can bring it in and start spraying it. Because I had a lot of mess in here. I didn't clean most of it up. I just mainly got to sweep the floors and blow everything down. Then I get started on the Camaro. Cleaned it on up. Then we'll go outside and start prepping the Camaro for its wet sanding. I got some of the material that I used when I was spraying the other pieces left over. It's not much, but I ordered some more, so I should have plenty. Let me take you outside. We'll start prepping up the Camaro. Here's the Camaro. It's been sitting outside. I had to cover it up, but it's still nasty. I also took the forges off after I had painted them. I'm going to put them back on once I paint the car. Got footprints from the cat climbing up in it. Also, I had to put the spray on up here because this tire here, it wouldn't hold no air. Before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and wash it up. Because I don't want to start wet sanding all this dirt and debris still on the car. So let me clean it up, then I'll cut you back on. Clean it on off. Then we'll let it dry. These spots here, it's where I had seen some imperfections when I was putting doors back on. It's just glazing pretty. But we're gonna let it dry. Then we'll spray some guide coat on it. And start wet sanding. It done dried off now. We're gonna spray some guide coat on it now. Most of the time I just like using flat black spray paint, but I ran out of flat black and I got some semi-gloss. It's best to use flat because it'll come off a lot easier, but it's not gonna hurt anything by using this semi-gloss. We're gonna spray some on there and we just wanna lightly mist it on. It should be good there. I'm going to do that all the way around the entire car. Yeah, I coated. It's been sitting out here about an hour. I had to run and do something. So everything dry for us to get a coat. Now we'll start wet sanding. Let me take you over here and show you what I got. I got some 600 here. This 400. And I got some 320. I'll be using this 320 because I'm going to spray some silver after I wet sand it to seal everything in. But if you're not spraying silly, you're going to scrape the base, you might want to go with 400 or 600. So that base coat can cover them scratches. The reason why I'm going with 320 because it's going to cut a lot faster than the 600. And the silly going to seal everything. So I got me a piece already cut. I'm just going to drop it in my soapy water here. Let it soak. Then I'll start blocking it. I got to run and get my blocks there in the shop. Let me run and get them right quick. Here's my blocks I'm going to be using. I got a rigid block and a soft block. I'm going to use these on the, well, I'm going to use this one here on a flat surface. And I'll probably get the flex block to go around, let's say if I'm going to do this area here. Or something like that, or up in here. 
and also when I got some well old bottom dish detergent bottom I'm gonna use this to keep my surface wet so I ain't gotta keep dipping it in my water let me wrap the uh, sandpaper around it and then we'll get started I'm gonna take my block I'm gonna start sanding in the egg pattern I'm trying to remove the guide coat it's going to show me all my low areas. Right now, I can see I got a, a low area here. But it's not nothing to be concerned about because the blocking is going to take all that out. See that area there? That's somewhat low and it's high. But the blocking will get all that. That's what the guide coat good for. Show you your low areas and show you what you haven't seen yet. All right, let's wipe this and see what we got. Okay, off the top you can see right here, it was a high area. It's breaking through the gray primer, but it's good because I'm gonna put a sill on it. And right here, I don't know if you can see it, right in this area, it's a light scratch. I still can feel it a little bit, so I need to block this some more. That's what the gag coat, you still can see the gag coat in that scratch. Alright, we did this section here. Let's see what we got. I didn't do all of it. I just wanted to show you the process and the progress what I'm making. You can see I still got to bring this down some more and that and that. I didn't touch this, but I came up here some. You can see there's a little imperfection now. I can bring that down some also here. Let's wipe this. We'll inspect it some more. Alright, I see a few spots I need to fill. This area here, this area, it's like a chip or something. And also this spot here. And I'm just going to use some glaze and put it on them spots. Let me show you what I'm going to be using. I can use either one of these. This is by Bundo, and this is by Pronto. Can't put this in nothing big that you need to put some filler in it or some two part because it'll shrink on you. Just go in minor imperfections. Like I said on the it say ideal for last minute repairs and imperfections. Ready to sign in minutes. It's minor imperfections. Nothing big. These are the five areas that I filled with the glaze and put it. 
I'm just gonna finish sanding the rest of the car. Then at the end, I'll just go around and fill all my spots. I just wanted to show you the process. Just wanted to show you some of the progress that I made. I don't know if you're seeing it, but I got some pinholes here that I need to fill with. I'm going to put one part glaze and put it in those. Also got one here. And I got a low spot here. I done sanded it far enough now, so I'm going to have to fill it. I can't go any further because this the actual bumper itself. So I'm going to have to fill this with some two part. I can't use one part in this because it'll shrink. It's too deep. And this the two part that I'm going to be using. It's the Evercoat. The can kind of bent up, but it's Evercoat polyester glazing putty. Use the hardener. I'm going to mix up some of that. Just put a little light skim coat along here. That's pretty much it. Just the two part. It's almost dry. It's dry to the touch, but I'm gonna let it dry up a little bit more. Then I, I wet sand this. Also, these little spots here. But for now, I'm finna move around, all around to this back part, start sanding it. I done did this bottom. I just gotta do this top part. Also, done did this area. Let me show you this spot here. It's like a scratch. Three scratches there. I wouldn't have never seen that if I want to put that guide coat on there. See how that scratch left the guide coat behind? Because that spot a lot lower than the rest of it. That's why it's good to use a block because if I would have did it by hand, I could have just dug that guide coat out also. It's good to use a flat block. Something like that. I use this one part glaze and put it just wipe it in there once it dry i'll block it pretty much got everything signed it now I still got to do this part here. At first I wasn't planning on painting this because I wanted to go ahead and get it done once I painted the jams. But on this other side, I had chipped the paint when I was installing the doors back on right here. I done put some put it right there. So that's the only reason why I got to repaint this. So now I got to scuff this up so the paint will stick to this. I already did this back side from here over. I'm not going to worry about painting this again. I'm just going to paint it right here. That's a good cutoff line. So let me go ahead and sand this. I'm going to sand this with the same. It's 320. Let me show you what to look for. I still got a little sanding I got to do right there. You still can see some shiny spots also here. It's a lot of it right here. You want to make sure you sand all that because if you don't, the paint ain't going to stick. It's just going to flake off. You need to look like this dual layer. I still got to do that side over there. Pretty much, I'm about finished. I'm doing the cutting in folds like around here. Got to do that. Also got to do it around the edges. I got to pop the hood and do it around the edges of everything. 
After that, I'll be good to go. Got it sanded. Now I wash everything up. Make sure I get in my jams real good because you don't want no paste or nothing in there because your masking ain't gonna stick. So you wanna make sure everything good and clean. Then once I do that, we'll push it in the shop and move to the next step before it's masking. Cleaned up. Now I get ready to push it in the booth. I gotta call Justin over. That's the owner. He'll help me push it in. Then we'll go from there. Got it pushed in the shop. Now what I do, I take these wheels off. Kind of raise it up a little bit. Because I ain't gonna be able to paint it with the wheels on. Because I couldn't get this area here. And plus I can raise it up some also. Got the rest of the paint up here. I had to order some more because I had planted a, a lot of more different stuff and I had ran out with just this gallon. Just the leftover. But I got got enough to finish now. So let me take care of that. Get these wheels off. Got the wheels off. I got it jacked up, not too high where I have problems getting this top part but I got it high enough so I can blow this bottom part without trying to spray the ground picking up dust I got my masking paper and tape over here plastic but before I start masking I got some fresh water I'm just gonna take this damp rag and go around Trying to wipe all this water up and plus get this paste up so I can mask. I have a clean surface masking. Also, if you're painting in the same day, you want to make sure the water up because you don't want to start spraying the water start coming out somewhere. Because paint and water do not mix. You can take the blow holes also and try to dry it up. But I'll probably paint tomorrow so I shouldn't have no problems. Let me show you what I done got done so far. I basically just done the cut ends, trimmed everything out with the masking tape around the edges. I just got to go back and fill it in with masking paper now. I back masked this part back here. So did up under there. I'm gonna put plastic all up under the engine bay because I don't want to overspray getting on it, even though they overspray it well. But I'm trying to keep as much of it off as I can. I just stuffed the newspaper up in here. I gotta fill this area here in. front area here down I think I got it good enough to keep the overspray from getting on the already painted surface close the hood up got it sealed off pretty good I'm working on the doors now did the top part of the t-tops I just got to do the ends bring it on over finish this back up the reason why I'm using 
paper and plastic because this plastic is not made for paint and the paint will flake off that's why I put paper up to where I'm going to be spraying that so it won't flake off on me I'm going to start it on the jams here I can pretty much close this door up Just got to bring the T-tubs down to the window opening. Let me show you this here right quick. See this gap? The door and the fender. In order to keep that overspray from going up in there and messing up my jams, I'm going to put a piece of tape on the inside. I can access it. From up in here, I can reach up in here and put some tape here. See my finger. Finished up with the doors and the T-top area. Pretty much got everything masked except the fender wheels. I done started on this one here. I'm just doing this so when I start spraying this area here, I don't kick up no dust from all that dirt in the fender wheels. You want to make sure it's clean before you start masking. Because it'd be a lot of dirt up in here and your mask can tape. It ain't gonna stick. Once I finish that, I think I'll be done. I'll start cleaning up after that. Finished up with the fender wheels. I also took some a maroon scotch brake and hit around this area here because I still could see some shiny areas because my land wasn't straight and I had scuffed up this bottom area even though it's going to be covered up with the side skirt but I'm still painting I didn't uh, wet sand this when I did the car so I just scuffed this up with this so the painter has something to burn too we'll clean everything up now cleaned up now it's time to wipe the car down with some wax and grease remover. We're going to be using this prep all. You can use a rag with two rags. I'm going to use some shop towels. Wipe it on with one and wipe it off with the other. that dust from kicking back up when I be walking back and forth now we'll spray the sealer and I'm gonna be spraying this color seal by Eurochem it's a white sealer I'm gonna be spraying out my saddle jet 1000B RP it's a 1.8 tip
silly here. It's been about four to five minutes. I recommend you wait an hour before you top coat it. So by the time I get ready to mix this base coat, this metallic base, I'm going with a light sunset gold metallic base. By the time I mix this up, I'll be good to go. Coats of the light sunset gold metallic base. It's 
it's been about say about 15 minutes since I sprayed the last coat it's dry to the touch now I spray my clear not clear but candy and it's gonna be the emerald green by you can
three coats of candy. And then mix up the clear. about 20 minutes since I sprayed the last coat walked around the car in this area here I wasn't too concerned about getting coverage because I'm painting this part here black and I'm gonna do a flow coat in probably three to four days and before I do the flow coat I'll be painting this black also I'm waiting on some IROC Z decals to come in and I'll be installing those along the door But I'll be doing that probably the next video. You just walk around the car.
Right from the bottom to the top, from the ground up, we'll never stop. Right from the bottom.